So it's uh, four o'clock. We're going live. It's the Living in Spain vlog, day five. I hope. Yeah, day five. We're talking about money transfer. So, God, that was quick. <laughs> I've got one person looking. So that's good. So hopefully that one person can say to me, they can see me okay, they can hear me okay. That's the main thing. I can see everything on the screen. Now, yesterday I had my other speaker on, but it didn't seem to affect the sound. I'll just move over my, my microphone a bit because I've no echoes in there a little bit. So that would be interesting. So we've got two people coming in. I'll just let a couple more people come in before we start blabbing about money transfer. I'll just give you a bit of gen for people that come in later on. So I've been living in Spain for nearly four years now. Nick, nice to see you, sir. Cool now. Yep, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> not so sunny Sweden. Yeah, I've been watching the weather up that way. It's not so good, is it? And in the UK. But down here, it's been, it's been a bit overcast today as well. But it's been really humid today. Um, anyway, so I've been living in Spain nearly four years. I live in the southeast of Spain, the Costa Colida, the Murphia region. I live on a, a big urbanization called Campusel, just outside the town of Mavron. And we're probably about 10, 15 minute drive from the nearest beach. Now, I can only tell you what I've gone through, my experience. I don't want to start waffling on about uh, this and that. If I haven't experienced it, then as far as I'm concerned, it's not true. I mean, there are obviously some things um, when we're talking about the NIE and things like that. Yeah, there, there is a procedure you have to do. And, and this week, each day, I've been picking out things which I think are quite important, especially if you're thinking about moving to Spain. If you're already living here in Spain, then you should have done these things already. But if you've just come in here or you're thinking about moving, then we've gone through the NIE, the Padron, the, um, <laughs> trying to remember it now, that this, the Spanish banks, and today we're talking about money transfer, because one of the things that you're obviously going to do, especially if you're buying property, not maybe not so much if you're renting, but if you're buying property, then you've got to start passing through huge amounts of money. Now, you can obviously pay it direct, straight from your bank, no problem, but then the bank likes to charge you. <laughs> I, I mean, to put Jackie, I mean, it would be, why we have to use a middle person, it just boggles me, you know, why the bank can't just, the money's there anyway, why they've got to think they've got to make money out of it, I don't know, but anyway, we, you've got to use a, a middle person, and I'll be honest, obviously when I was in the UK, I never bothered with a money transfer thing, when I went abroad, I just went to the local post office and got my money and did it that way, but once you're here in Spain, you need to, you need to move big amounts of money. So you're going to have to use a money transfer company. Now, I never used them before. And looking on the net, it's always a worry because some of these names, they got some weird names. And I didn't write them down, did I? Of course I did. <laughs> now, the other thing, as I noticed on the web, was, you know, these um, top, what's the top best 10 money share companies? And they always got... They're, they're set, aren't they? You know, um, I don't know. Was it money transfer? And the, the, some of these companies seem to hold the top bit. And are, are they really the best? And I think the main thing is, um, see, and what's good, guys? Obviously, look at the comments as well, because there's other people who has got some good advice as well, because they they've been through it as well. I think one of the main things is when you're first here in spain and you're moving big amounts of money you have to got to go and have a look and see what their rates are because they do differ a lot and if you're moving 15 grand a day it makes a big difference especially changing it down to euros it can make a lot of difference really you know especially if you've got if you're going to pay out 200 or 150,000 in sterling into euros it can be a big hunk out of your pocket really so you have to be careful what you're doing valentine nice to see you sir um so just remember that so yeah search online i mean obviously 
if if your friends use certain companies, obviously that's a that's a great way of um, finding out who to use. Now Jackie's just mentioned um, TransferWise. I think it's a big one. You can use an app on that. Western Union is another one. Now, what also you got to remember if you got to move money quickly, some of them do charge. Now some don't, but some do charge. So be wary of that. We was advised to use Money Call, um, and be, to be honest, the first year, you know, they were fantastic. And when we was moving the huge amounts of money, everything went fine. We obviously sent it from our bank. They they always send you an email to acknowledge that they received the money, and obviously they say they transfer it to your bank account in Spain, which is great. Now, later on. <laughs> Uh, because I suppose that some of these big companies, and I've got a couple written down here, and I haven't heard half of some of these. You got Currency Fair, you got XE, World. Got to think, going right in there. World First, OFX, Currency Direct, a Zemo, TransferWise, Instream, MoneyCall, TorFX. Uh, the, the list goes on, but. You have to you have to be careful sometimes, especially when you're doing it online, just to make sure if it, if you want it instantly, some of them do put a charge on it. So just be wary of that. Obviously, your bank puts definitely puts a charge on it, but they do tell you before you do the transfer how much it's going to cost you. So I suppose that's one thing about your own bank, giving you an idea of what the cost is. But I know with when we was using money call there was a couple of times that we would go online and for some reason hi patricia nice to see you sometimes for some reason the pages changed and you was um say instantly changing your money and there'd be a charge for it and then you have, you have to reset the settings because you want it free now what i didn't like about money call was they didn't always even though it was free they didn't always do it instantly, and especially if you did it on a Friday, it wouldn't go in till probably Monday, Monday midday. And and sometimes, um, yeah, it would take over a day. Now, we, we've changed ours now. Um, and, and the only reason I've changed my money call thing was that we did have a problem, and at the end of the day, it wasn't money calls from problem in the end, it was the Spanish bank's problem in the end, but what annoyed me, we had to keep phoning that money call and trying to get to somebody uh, of, of some authority to speak to was really hard. And they kept on saying that they would email us once they resolved the problem. Well, they never emailed us. And, and anyway, we, it was resolved in the end. And I think a month later, uh, money call contacted us again to see if the money, if we received our money. And I'd, I'd rather speak to somebody. Anyway, thankfully on campus sale, we got Currency Direct, which is right next door to the bank. And I've gone down there. I don't know about the rates. I, I think once you pass in, mate, we, we pass a thousand a month for our account, and we're only talking euros, really. If you're part, if you're passing through thousands, yeah, that's a big difference. But because we're only passing a thousand a month, there's not a lot in it really. The every every hour in it the, the the rate changes anyway and obviously at the moment the brexit thing uh it well i won't say it's going up and down it's probably it's going down <laughs> nick nice to see it two nicks there's two nicks there now um it, it's yeah it's going down and down it's not like you can do about that uh lot like i've mentioned before in some of my other videos that i class now a euro to the pound and anything over the extra that we get for the pound is always a bonus for us it's an extra night out having something to eat but paul nice to see you so yeah just just be wary whoever you use um it's probably better to if you've got friends living in spain who they use uh, the other thing is what was it all about <laughs> my brain's gone dead now um yeah just be wary about those charges because they're supposed to be free. Now, with Currency Direct, it's, when you go on the site, it's instant. So you've got to do it within the 60 seconds, or else the, the rate will change within a couple seconds to less cents and whatever else. But 
but it, it's within the hour. It's it it's straight in the account. Whereas Money Court, that one, now it, it was both are free. So it, it's it's interesting. Who asked people? What other people? Robbie. Uh, what people use as well? I mean, when before we come over, we, we had to set up. Another thing you got to do as well, you have to set yourself up with these companies. You can't just sort of go online quickly, set yourself up. I think you got to prove your address, something like that. It, it doesn't take long. It's just a matter of filling out a form. Um, and I'm sure somebody there, <laughs> I'm sure somebody's going to put something in the comments about that, about what, what the form you have to fill out. But we, we filled up the form out. We used two or three different money transfer companies but we just stuck with one in the end which is money call um and it like i said when you're moving big amounts of money it's it might you, you might even have to change a couple of money transfer companies just to see how they're performing that day because it's going to make a big difference in your pocket when you're moving big amounts of money and if you've got to do it instantly maybe then maybe you do have to pay for it a little bit but yeah I mean, it's so annoying why your bank can't just do it for you. You know, you've got your money in their account. But yeah, I'm just, I'm going to have a quick look at the uh, comments now before I get too carried away. So Jackie says she uses uh, Money Call. No, sorry. <laughs> she uses TransferWise. Now, I believe that they have an app so you can do it straight away on your phone, which is good. Um, and she reckon well, she says that they get a better deal. Uh, Nick uses Currency Direct. I mean, like I just said, we got Currency Direct actually on campus. So, and what I like about that, if you, if you do get a problem, because I like speaking to people, I, and I can go down to the office, I can I'll do it in the office, I can transfer the money that way, that their phone up and do it that way, or I can do it online, or I can pop in there to make sure. That they put the money into the bank which is only next door and then if they haven't i can pop into my bank and say come on because <laughs> that's what annoys me why it, you know you got you got all this technology all this digital know-how that press of a button and it's instant but it never is instant it does seem to take a little bit of time and when you've got bills coming in <laughs> because here in spain um if you don't if you ain't got the money there the, the, you, you have to pay for it you know you get fined and all that sort of thing now somebody did because just going back to the banks thing now somebody said to me yesterday would it be better to put your money into a building society in spain i don't think there's any building societies in spain i think they're just all banks i think the banks deal with everything don't they i'm right to think because i haven't seen no building societies here in spain now, I'd be interested to know if anyone else has got any comments on that. But yeah, that was a, a, something that was brought up yesterday. And I can't really answer that because I, I, where I live, I've never seen a bank building society. And I know my wife just said straight away, well, there's, there's no building societies. But it'd be interesting to know if there is. There's, there's, a, there's a pause there. Anyway, what I'll do now, what because what I've been doing each day, I've been taking stuff off the net, and, and then we'll, I'll be reading it out, and then I'll, I'll query whatever they say on the net. Because I think the other hardest thing is, is when you're doing your research on the net, it doesn't always tally up to is when you actually go down to the uh, notary or your bank or the town hall, because you, you, you read it all off the net, and it says you've got to do this and that. And when you actually go down there, you, you, it's totally different maybe you've forgotten your passport it didn't say anything about it and it's interesting to see how things differ around the country because that's the other thing with spain it does seem that each town each province has a different way of dealing with things and i'm talking about your nie your patron your driving license all these things they're not all set to stone they're all different and it, it is worrying sometimes because especially when you're going through residency you, you read on the net, you've got to have 15,000 in your account. Well, I've, I've never had that amount of money in my account ever. But um, frankly, that where we are was was little rumors or wrong. It's put out wrong. 
Hey, anyway, what is the best way to send your money? Your bank, obviously. But money transfer sites offer a better deal, which is very true. That's what I was trying to explain right at the beginning was about why we can't just deal with, with your own bank moving the money, but no, we've got to use a middle person, which just seems bizarre to me, but that's the way that way things are done with the money people around the world. Right. No, all transactions over 2,500 euros are required by law not to be made with cash. So if you're buying anything um, that's over 2,500 officially, and I know it goes on there, you're not supposed to pay in cash. You're supposed to uh, use your card or some sort of uh, payment. It's all to do with money laundering. And obviously Spain over the years has had big time problems with money laundering. And they've been trying to clamp down because that's why we got all these uh, abandoned properties around Spain where money wasn't being wasn't done in the right way. So just remember that if you're buying obviously a car or something like that, you you're supposed to pay by card or check. Check. I don't know if these do they do they do check books here? I've never seen a check book, but maybe they do. So Mandy uses Excel currencies. Good. It's, it's nice to see other names as well coming up with the uh, money transfer companies. Right, I, I went through some of the money sites. I've got Currency Fair, uh, I've got XE, never heard of XE. I've got another one here, I can't even... <laughs> got World something, I can't read that. No, I've got another one that's got World First, I've got OFX. Currency direct, which we know about. A Zemo. Now, obviously, there's probably a lot of, a lot of European uh, companies as well dealing with this as well. So it's not just uh, local um, UK firms as well, and Spanish and a lot of French and whatever else. Uh, Transfer Wise is another big one. Western Union is another one. Now, I have to use Western Union every year when I have to do my clarify my pension. Uh, my, 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 one of my private pensions has to be verified every year and I have to go down to the, the local post office which use uh, Western Union which is free which is good so that's another one uh, um, Money Call, Tor FX and no doubt there's a few more that I don't know that you guys can probably use uh, okay so when, you, when you're buying a property set a limit from your bank uh, so when you are buying a property and you're transferring huge amounts of money always set a limit with your bank now i'm not too sure what the limit is that you can transfer i don't obviously you can't transfer the whole lot all at once but i think it's a good idea that you do transfer it in lumps um that's what we did i did fifteen thousand a day it took me <laughs> took me over a week nearly um, and obviously the other thing that, what, that frightened me really was that I didn't have no Wi-Fi in the place that I was renting. So I had to go down to the local cab um, that had a hotspot and you got like two hours of uh, free Wi-Fi. And obviously when you're in those sort of places, the Wi-Fi is really slow because there's other people in there as well. And what I was mainly worried about was people hacking into my laptop while I was doing these transfers. But I had a chat with my local bank back in the UK and they obviously were keeping an eye on my movement of my money, which was good. And so that's another thing you got to do as well, guys. Keep in contact with your bank, wherever you're coming from, just just to let them know what's going on. Because hopefully they are watching when they're taking out huge amounts of money. Now... But saying that, I had one of my friends from, he's probably not on today, John, Phil Venturi, <laughs> one, of the, one of the Spanish islands, uh, and he, he uses the same bank as me. Anyway, somebody had obviously cloned his card and took out 700 euros. He's got to go down to the post, down to the local police station now to get a form to fraudulent claims or whatever. So it, just be wary with 
not just your UK bank or your European bank, but also the bank that you're putting your money into to make sure everything's coming through fine because it doesn't always come up straight away. And there's nothing worse <laughs> when all that amount of money is sitting in there and some something happens or something goes wrong. And what used to go wrong with me when I was using the Wi-Fi spot, I'd get you can't believe how quick time goes when you just if you think just doing a transfer would take a couple of minutes well it, it didn't happen like that and i was always near the end and then something right in the middle of the transfer the thing would just crash and i was just think hang on i've just sent 15 grand and now my thing's crashed and when i go back in the fifth i don't know straight away if the fifteen thousand has actually been transferred so I have to put in another 15, but you know, you go through your bank again and then you just check to make sure you have double paid it. It's a nightmare. It to me it was anyway. I I didn't I mean I, I enjoy I don't enjoy it, but I it's not so bad now. Now I'm only doing my monthly payments. Now I don't know what you guys do. I mean I I, I still don't really trust the Spanish banks. <laughs> I still only put enough money in my Spanish bank just to pay for all our uh, utilities, really. Everything else I'll keep back in the UK. Uh, mainly because my, my folks who lived out here in Spain had their account hacked into, and it took ages to get their money back. They didn't, they didn't get all their money back, but they got some of it back. Um, and I've known since I've been here, a couple of the Spanish banks have collapsed. And it's not like especially in the UK, where if a bank does shut, they automatically transfer, or, well, hopefully they do, they do all your direct debits and all that. Well, that, that doesn't happen here. If a bank shuts, it shuts, and it's up to you to go down to the, the new bank and set up all your accounts again, which can be not easy, you know. Um, so just be wary of that as well. And it's, it's always interesting if any of you uh, guys out there as well have got any good stories. <laughs> I don't mean good stories, but if, if you've had any problems with any of these money transfer companies or banks or whatever, and put it down in the comments. Or even better, if you can put it down actually under the video afterwards. And also, I'm just looking at time now. <laughs> also, could you put... If you've got any comments because next week i think it's going to be from sunday onwards i'll be doing answers and questions if you've got any questions please put them down below and uh, i'll talk about that next week so sort of give you a, a gen on what's going on tomorrow we'll be talking about i think we're talking about the spanish language tomorrow and then on this the day after that we're talking about another important thing i think is healthcare, and then after that we'll be doing questions and answers if you've got anything like that now i'm going to ask straight away because i've just seen mark <laughs> nice to see you mark if could i ask what you guys where you're coming from uh it's it gives me an idea what the chat about as well so most of my guys are coming from obviously the uk the, the sort of middle midlands ireland uh I've, I did see, yep, there's, I had a guy from Sweden, I forgot, and obviously got some people from Spain as well. Um, but it's nice to know where else we're coming from. Now, I, I've had a guy from Australia. Um, so, yeah, it gives me, just gives me an idea on future videos, what I can chat about that sort of involves other people. I mean, the, the thing I can't help people with, unfortunately, is anybody that's outside the EU, because I don't really know how that works about you coming into spain especially to do it, how much money you have to bring in and obviously you need a visa i would imagine the whole procedure is completely different um <laughs> kurt saying he's from the us <laughs> um yeah so it just gives you but i mean if there's anybody that's living in spain that's from the us or anybody outside the eu it will always be handy to know uh is it easy is it just as easy for us guys uh in the in in the eu that's moving about for us it's not no problem really the only problem is is obviously making sure you've got enough money coming in to live on really so 
We've got West Yorkshire, Columbia. Oh, South Carolina. Right, yep. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> I just caught where I thought, oh, didn't know there was South Carolina in the uh, UK. Five from Robbie. Fuller Martin. <laughs> My ass, amazing place. My, my folks used to live down near um, Malaga, a place called the Cartamara Cart Station. And we always used to go up to my house, or my ass, I used to call it. Lovely place. And they've been doing so much work up there, haven't they? They've, they've been, when I first come there, that was just a little, typical little Spanish touristy village, I suppose, with the donkeys and whatever, and the ball ring. And now, the last time I was down there, they, they'd already built across the side of the mountain with more and more apartments looking down on uh, Fingeroli, I'm right in thinking. And behind it, they've got all the golf courses. And there's there was another little town behind that called Coin. I call Coin. It's probably not pronounced like that. That was just a little village. And the last time we looked there, me and the wife, when we was looking down that way, it was like a massive well part of some farms like it's own part of Blimey Malaga really. Baz, nice to see you. So Kurt's already said <laughs> I mean yeah, it, there, there is a lot of paperwork admittedly when you're going through the, the you know the NIA, the Patron, uh, and especially going for residency uh, residency, you, you have a folder probably about that thick. I'm just trying to shout on the screen. Of paperwork they do love that's one thing i love here paperwork and stamping it they like putting the old stamp on anything that's a full size <laughs> i wish i'd shown you my um my nie and my padron because to me they all, they all look the stuff they got some big official mark on the top there um and then you got a big official mark down the bottom and it's just got your number on it and where you're on your name obviously yeah all official but do they, you know, <laughs> is it really needed? But I suppose that's the way it is. That's, that's wherever you're going to go, I suppose, to move to. So we've got a couple minutes left just to give you an idea what I do each day on this. I hope you're enjoying it. That's the main thing. Um, like as I said, outside today, the weather's not so good. We're a bit cloudy. It's, it's really humid today. Uh, it's been a really sort of sticky day for us here in Spain. Don't know how I cope with all the hot weather. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> uh, I just put up, just saying that, I just put up the last sector on Campusol. So I put up all four sectors now. So you want to check out Campusol and all it's, just to show you the size of it, it is massive. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing area, Malaga, and I, I wish I could have afforded to live down there, but unfortunately, the price range was just way out of my pocket. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm just, just reading Mark's comment there. He's got that horrible uh, hurricane that's been going through uh, the Caribbean area done a huge amount of damage uh, i hope you guys out there in the us are all safe this is the main thing and, and I'm, I'm surprised uh this past month we've been having some in, not here thankfully but uh, especially down near i think i think it was malaga uh, and also up near valencia they had some huge uh, heavy rainfall and i actually and there's some typhoons didn't think Spain got typhoons, uh, and they look pretty pretty colossal. I don't, but thank you, no, no nothing made, no major damage, which is uh, good to hear, really. So don't forget, tomorrow we're talking about the Spanish language. That's going to be interesting because <laughs> my from cap, my uh, my words of Spanish is very minimal. But we're going to be talking about what you use to learn your Spanish. My wife's very good at it. She's got a lot of, lot of cards with names on 
and she flicks it over and it's got English on one side and Spanish on the other. Great way of learning. Now we do watch the telly a lot. But yeah. Left from Norway. Nice to see you. Nice to see uh, some of the North Europeans coming in today. Fortuna. Yeah. Oh, right, guys. That's it. It's that time again. My half hour slot is up. Hope you enjoyed this one. Um, <laughs> what's Pepper Pig got to do with it? Anyway. Adios amigos. I'll catch you tomorrow at the same time. And don't forget, tomorrow we're talking. You know, we talk. We're trying to talk Spanish. We're talking about the Spanish language tomorrow. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Catch you tomorrow. Adios. <laughs>